Hey guys, the Easy Man here. Now in today's video, we're taking a look at one of the most striking bikes that we reviewed on the channel in quite some time. Uh, we're talking about the C3 Strom Astro Pro. As you look at this bike, the only thing that comes to mind is motorcycle. It is an absolutely gorgeous bike that has the styling, the flair, and I have to say, even the feeling of riding a motorcycle. This is, again, the Astro Pro. Let's go ahead and check out the specs, and we're gonna take this thing for a ride. Now, the Astro Pro is packed with power. We're talking about 750 watts, peak 1,200 watts. Um, it really has an enormous battery, uh, 1,040 watt Samsung uh, battery that's gonna give you power and also, I would say, distance. It's gonna give you up to 78 miles with uh, pedal assist. It also then has 32 miles uh, electric only range. And if you're looking at this bike in one ring, well, you know, it doesn't have an adjustable seat. What height rider will it support? Well, it's gonna go anywhere from 5'3 to 6'3. This thing is designed to be ridden. And again, when you really look at the overall look of this bike, it, it is like on any other bike that we've had on the channel to date. It has an eight speed Shimano system. It can support 330 pounds, max weight load, right? So that's not just your weight, but this is the combination of your weight plus whatever you would want to carry on this bike. Uh, the seat height, for those of you who are curious about the seat height, uh, that's going to be of 30.6 inches, right? So if you're wondering what the seat height is from the ground, that's what you can expect right there. Now, it has an aluminum alloy frame. It also then has a four piston hydraulic brake system. It has a gorgeous LED um, arrangement for turning signals and also for brake lights that are just, again, everything on this bike is really about attention to detail and you can see it just on the treatment of all the accents and even the LEDs. Now this has uh, pedal assist mode obviously, zero to five pedal assist modes and it also has puncture resistant tires which is gonna give you that peace of mind when you're on the road. They're fat tires so these are designed for snow, for sand, for dirt, right? This is gonna go on anywhere bike but it's puncture resistant. You're talking about 20 inch 4.25 uh, wide tires and it does have an IPX6 rating. This bike, again, is made for the outdoors and it has the looks to prove it too. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the bike. We'll go on a ride and we'll check out why I'm so excited about this new bike. All right, guys, so we're gonna take a closer look now at this beautiful bike. And remember, this is the C3 Strom Astro Pro. And yeah, this is a bike. No, it's not a motorcycle, but maybe it is. I don't know. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, guys, so joking put aside, this is truly a, a class three e-bike. It basically has a 750 watt uh, powertrain that you can see right here in the back. Uh, but that powertrain is really gonna give you uh, the ability to go pretty far, right? So you're looking at a 78 mile range and that's obviously gonna be with uh, pedal assist. And for some of you who are wondering how long does it take to charge something like this, it's gonna take four to five hours, uh, which is not bad given the capacity of this battery. This is a 1040 watt Samsung battery. Now, if you want to ride this pure electric with no pedaling, you're going to look at around 32 mile range without any kind of pedals. Now, it does have two classes, right? We said this is a class three e-bike. So on road, top speed, it's going to be 28 miles per hour. And that's going to vary based on your body weight, right? So, and a lot of other conditions. So it's going to be about wind. It's also going to be the inclination, but you can expect depending on your body weight um, and also the driving conditions to hit 28. Now, if you go off-road, it has an off-road mode that will pump it up to 32 miles per hour. And that's going to be, again, pretty significant, right? Uh, peak power, right? Even though we said that this was a 750 watt um, kind of powertrain, you can look at 1200 watt peak coming from this. Uh, so uh, the other thing that you'll notice is right here in the back that you do have a Shimano 8-speed uh, gear system, right? So you're looking at eight speed there. So if you're looking at pedaling, you're definitely going to be able to pedal with this. And given the tire profile that you see there, which is again, a 20 by 4.25 puncture resistant tires, you're going to be able to support around 330 total pounds on the spike. So if you think about you as a rider or you as a rider, and then also some groceries or something that you're carrying with you, you can have a total capacity of 330 pounds. So that's uh, pretty spectacular. And as you're starting to see from this frame here, you're looking at a frame that is an aluminum alloy frame. So really, really nice. 
Um, the other thing that I'll highlight on the back, and we'll see it on the other side in a second, is that this does have hydraulic brakes, has a really nice braking system. Now, the one thing that you'll notice here on the back is that the actual fenders are worry-free fenders. They are made out of a you know, plastic material uh, that you don't have to worry about rust, you don't have to worry about any kind of dents. And more importantly, I really like how much coverage you get. These go really far out. So it probably is one of the, the furthest I've seen. So you'll notice right here, all the way, all the way over there to by where the chain, beneath the chain in the bottom over there is where this actual kind of like fe uh, fender mard guard ends, which I think is pretty cool, right? Because it covers so much of the tire, which means that as you're riding it, if you're using this as a last mile uh, device to get to the office, you don't have to worry about your pants getting dirty, um, if you're, you know, on shorts and it's starting to rain or there, you're going through some gravel or some mud, you don't have to worry about anything picking up because of how much of a coverage that you get in that area. Now, in the back of the bike, you do have a really heavy-duty support rack, full metal support rack. Uh, you can have a bag back here or saddle bag to carry some things. Um, this is not designed for two people, right? It's not designed for someone to sit here in the back. But if you want to carry some goods with you, your laptop, a backpack, or, you know, a day bag, you can definitely do so. Now, one other thing we'll highlight is that the chain system is one of the longest chain systems I've seen on a bike, and it may be because of the frame itself, but you'll notice how long this is. This is really, really long. I haven't seen this in any other uh, bike, but I really do like the design. I like how open it is right here. Um, and then also, one of the things that you'll have to watch is, depending on how much you're leaning on this, you'll want to watch those pedals, because I have a feeling that those pedals do go pretty far down. So I can see that if you're leaning uh, pretty harshly, uh, that you can scrape those as depending on, you know, what side you're leaning to. Now this over here is a better angle and I think you're going to get a better sense of how much these fenders cover. Uh, they describe them as full coverage. And again, I have to highlight, look at how much they're covering. So all the way in the back, all the way to the front. So this is definitely a full coverage. Now here is your four piston uh, brake system. Uh, heavy duty brake system, really, um, I'd say more motorcycle inspired than anything else. Now this area here, as you can look at the front tire, this is gonna give you a better look at the tires themselves, which are very much motorcycle inspired. And then as you can look at here, the actual brake system, you get a really nice view of this. Um, like the attention to detail, everything fits so well. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of hard to think about metal being organic, but you know, just the overall design language of this bike speaks so much of how much thought was given to the design and how everything fits in. It doesn't really feel like these were just parts that were put together. A lot of thought was put into the design and the overall architecture when you look at how the bike just sits and then also how all the pieces just come together. Now this headlight, what can I say about it outside of the fact that it also is just gorgeous. Uh, this headlight actually has two beams, very similar to a car. It has a high beam, a low beam, and then it has a daylight. So you're going to have this uh, lit up as you're using it, and then you have two beams that come out of here depending on what you're trying to light up. So high beam and low beam, your low beam is going to be dropping lower on the street. High beam is going to be higher, so it's going to be covering a longer area, but also it's going to have a pretty decent throw. Uh, you'll also notice on each one of these sides, these are your turning signals, and you heard that right. This bike actually has turning signals. Let's turn them on. All right, so now this is gonna give you kind of a, a sense of what the lighting system looks like. So again, really beautiful display here. And then you can see how it's just not a blinking, but it's kind of like that uh, breathing experience, how it breathes um, as it's going to each one of the sides. So again, you have a left marker and a right marker, and it has that same, same treatment. So this is definitely, you're gonna be very visible at night, or even during the day, people are going to see you. All right, now one of the cool things about this brake light is that it's synchronized with the turning signal. So you don't really have two different light systems, meaning a brake light and then having a left and right marker. But the brake light then basically transforms itself. And as you can see how it's basically growing from right to left, because that's how my signal is pointing, it's actually um, converted this from being brake to turning signal. In daylight, people are going to see you. No problems there. Now here's the battery of the bike and it does have a switch here. This is going to be your flip switch and then here is your actual charging port, right? So we'll go ahead and open this up so you can see what this looks like. And the nice thing about this is that this is an IP65 rated bike. Ah, giving me a hard time, doesn't want to open up on me. Let's move this up, there it is. And you can see it has a proprietary plug, uh, but I'm okay with that. Most bikes don't have universal uh, plugs. This one's a little bit different, um, more different than some that I've seen but that's, that's fine. Uh, this entire piece comes out, 
with the keys, and I'll show you where the key area is. And then you'll notice here that there's a really nice flaring that we'll look at in a different angle. Um, not functional, but definitely stylish. All right, so here's another nice angle so you can see this. And again, it's just the attention to detail as you have here. Um, you have uh, the logo is also embedded into the frame, but what you also then have is this battery that tucks away really nicely. And uh, again, when you remove it, it actually goes this way and then pops out. Now the handlebar is very, again, very motorcycle inspired, has some nice, I would say, distance to it. It also has nice height. I didn't find when riding this bike that I was leaning forward too much. Everything was, just felt very appropriate. Now, um, your display is also very bright. It's gonna give you a lot of information as you're riding. Uh, you also then have, you'll notice here, um, your memory area, which is gonna be moving from fun function to function. This button right here is gonna take you to the different gears that you have. So you'll notice that you have these different modes. You have eco mode, right? As you go up, it goes to you know, your uh, standard mode option. And then as you keep on going, it goes into your turbo mode, which is your speed five. Uh, your gear shifter is located at here on the side. We're gonna take a closer look at it. It's a little bit different, it's on your left side. Most gear systems are on the right, but I've ridden many bikes that have it on the left side. It doesn't take too much to get used to it, and it's also a twist gear system, so you'll see that in a second. Brakes are very nice as well. Um, they have uh, both, you know, they're hydraulic, so the brakes are really responsive too. Now, one other thing that we'll highlight is that you do have a hydraulic suspension here that you can adjust, so this is something that you can um, adjust to get the right ride. Unfortunately, it does not have a rear suspension system outside of what you get from your tires, but you have a very comfort comfortable ride. The other thing is that the saddle is very, very soft, and you'll see that in a second. Now, as you focus on the, the right uh, handle, uh, this is where you have basically uh, your throttle. So you have, again, this is where you would grip, and it has kind of a stipple in here, but this is your throttle, and it's a twist throttle. Um, I like how it's positioned here. One of the things I would say is make sure anytime you stop the bike or you come to a stop that you set it to zero. Um, you don't want to inadvertently uh, throttle this, um, especially if you're just doing some light pedaling. So I like switching it to zero and then you can have everything that's right here. Now, this is where you can also shift your low beam and high beam, right? You have your turning signals here, right, which we saw. You also have a horn which is um, electronic and it is loud, it's not a, a dinky horn. And then uh, what you then have up here is again, uh, your brakes. So you have both brakes front and back. Now the actual uh, shifting mechanism is found here and it's also a twist mechanism. Now one of the things that I saw in early reviews uh, for this bike was that the numbers were upside down because it looks like they had used one that was designed for the right side on the left side. So it was upside down. That's been corrected. Uh, or improved, so your numbers are listed correctly. I don't really look at this this closely, but then all you do is twist up and twist down, and then the shifting system just responds, which is also really nice. Um, again, you have also your power button, and you do have in the very bottom here, you also then have a USB uh, powering port. So if you wanna power your phone, um, you may have, let's say, a phone mount uh, connected to the bike, uh, you'll be able to power that from the bike itself. Now the key, uh, which is not required to start the bike because you do have the power button on the side, uh, this is used only to remove the battery. Uh, would go here, you basically twist it, and the battery slides out real nicely. Highly recommend you do that, especially if you are gonna be uh, parking this somewhere. Uh, you don't want someone uh, wanting to take a fully functional bike. So anything that you can do to deter uh, someone from uh, taking your bike, um, do it, and I'm a big proponent of just removing the battery especially if I'm parking it in a public area. Now, on the bottom, you do have your bottle mounting area so that you can put a bottle if you'd like there. Uh, there may be some accessories that are available. Um, we'll have to look and see what else there is available for this bike. All right, guys, so today is a treat. First of all, the weather in Chicago, we had some snow, but it's in the 40s, and it gave me an opportunity to really enjoy this new bike that we're reviewing in the channel. And as you're looking at it, you may say, bike or motorcycle, which one is it? Well, I'll tell you, it is probably a bike that wants to be a motorcycle or a motorcycle that wants to be a bike because I can only tell you that I absolutely love the way this bike looks. So this is the Astro Pro from C3 Strom. It is a fantastic bike. This is one of the best bikes that we've seen on the channel so far. And as you can see, I am pedaling, and as I am pedaling, I actually have pedal assist on. I'm gonna turn it off for a second, just so that I could just do the human power piece. 
I'll go ahead and bring that down one level. So right now what you're seeing is me pedaling on my own, no assistance at all, just uh, me doing my thing. And I do have it on a very light gear, so uh, there's really not a lot of effort going into my pedaling, so um, a little cheating. But this is, first of all, this is a, an eight speed, an eight speed bike that has two modes, it's a class three bike that has off-road modes up to 32 miles per hour. Uh, you heard that right, 28 miles is the standard mode, up to 32 if you are off-road and you turn that feature on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead back to power assist and it kicked in right there really nicely. All right, so the rest of the review, we're gonna be going on electric only, uh, but you can see pedaling is pretty nice and if I'm contributing with pedaling, right now it says I'm doing 12 to 13 miles an hour. We're gonna see how well it does um, as we do some speed tests and some brake tests. But let's talk about the bike. Uh, first of all, 750 watt powertrain, but could go up to well over a thousand um, based on the tech that this bike has. It does have that beautiful looking motorcycle uh, type look, which I absolutely love. And what I find is that despite it being a you know, non-adjustable saddle, right? You can't adjust the saddle at all. It is very comfortable to pedal, at least for me. I'm 5'6", and you can see me pedaling, right? My knees do come up a little bit high, but it's not terribly uncomfortable. Now this bike does have the gear system on this side. So you have your eight speed, it's a twist dial type gear system. You also have your controls right here on the side where you can actually uh, you know, increase the power. I'm on pedal assist one and then go through the little menu mode. You have hydraulic brakes. You have a striking headlamp uh, that is very reminiscent to a motorcycle with turning signals that you can control on this side. So on this side, you actually control that. You also then have a hydraulic fork that is giving you a really delicious suspension ride. So I'm telling you, this, this feels really nice. Combined with 20 inch uh, four inch, a little bit over four inch, I think it's four and a quarter inch wide tires that are incredibly striking uh, when you look at them, but also give you a fantastic, fantastic ride. Now the uh, steering, the handlebar rides a little low, but you'll notice that I'm not leaning forward. I'm not really having to, to go like this. I'm actually able to lean normally and it's very comfortable, right? Uh, the pedals, you can see uh, by my stride, right now I have pedal assist on, so it's actually kicking in and I'm getting uh, leaped into like 12 miles an hour. That's on pedal assist one. Uh, feel very natural. The gear system also feels very natural. Now, uh, we mentioned that it does have turning signals both in front and back. Has a brake light as well. Has a removable battery right here that you can turn off. And then it also has a switch on the other side that you would flip if you want to turn off uh, the bike so that it doesn't turn on simply by pressing the button. But the key in the battery, um, or the key itself, is only used to remove the battery. It does not disable the bike uh, in any way. Uh, what else can I tell you about the bike? Um, besides the overall look, uh, it does have one of the best, I would say, mudguard systems I've seen in a bike in a very long time. Uh, if you look at the front tire, and we're going to go around here in a corner. All right, so as we look at, at the front, we'll... Notice where my foot is right here. Uh, the actual mud guards go down, or the fenders go down pretty far low, both in front and in the back. They go extremely low, which means it's gonna give you great protection so you won't lift up any kind of mud or debris. Now, what we're gonna do is, I have pedal sys one on, and I know that when I hit pedal sys one, I'm able to hit up to 12 miles an hour. Let's see if that's gonna be true. Uh, 12 miles an hour, there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and go to pedal sys mode two, and now, it is 17, 18, 19, 20 miles an hour. Let's try pedal assist three. 22, it's going way above it. I don't think I can pedal fast enough for this, but you saw how nice that was. Let's go ahead and go pedal assist four. See how fast we can go. Oh, clearly we can go well above 25 miles an hour very fast. Very, very nice. Whew, that took the wind out of me. Now the braking system for this bike is really nice too. Um, comes to a nice stop, very, very quiet. It's just whisper, just whispers when you hit the brakes. 
uh, front and rear brakes really really nice again um, this is a single person bike even though it has um, a support area right here for cargo uh, it doesn't have any kind of pegs nor have I seen that it has an extended seat in any way so now what we're gonna do is an acceleration test. So we're right now traveling around five miles an hour. I have it on level five, and we're just gonna hit it, and we're gonna see how fast we can go. So I'll call out the speed, 11, 13, 14, 16, 18. We have 18 miles an hour, 18, and that's top speed with throttle. As soon as I kick in the pedal, it starts going a little bit faster. 23, 24, 25, 25, 25, and is it going faster? Yeah, 25.3 is the fastest I can get. All right, guys, so I went ahead and put the bike on the heaviest gear, and all it really takes is switching the gear here on the side to eight. I would also have enabled the off-road model or mode just to see how well it's gonna do. We're right now, wow, that is 28 miles an hour pedaling oh my god 29 miles an hour 30 miles an hour whoa that's incredible all right guys so we're going to do a speed test full throttle we have class 3 enabled and we're going to see how fast we can get so right now we're at 26 miles an hour 27 28 28 29.1 20 30 we just hit 30 30.5 30.5 and the speedometer is telling me 28, 29. So 30.5 is what this is reading. Absolutely amazing. We're gonna test out the suspension. We're gonna see how well this back saddle does. The front is, is great, um, really. Suspension in the front, really, really nice. Don't fear any jarring movements with my uh, wrists at all. So this feels very comfortable and I like that I can ride back, that I'm not leaning forward, even though it's kind of a type of bike that you want to lean forward just because it looks so cool. So we're going to go ahead and test this bike path out and see how well it does. It's kind of, uh, we got melting snow here, a lot of melting snow in Chicago, but it's still beautiful. And this feels good so far all right so we're taking some bumps here definitely not like super duper off-road terrain but still feeling the bumps and my tush is surviving right so the saddle has almost like a memory foam to it so it feels really good um, could it benefit from suspension yeah it probably could everything could benefit from suspension anytime you have suspension in the back but I probably not give that as a major negative, just as a, an area of improvement. So what are my thoughts so far on this one? <laughs> love it. Uh, like the ride, love the look. Um, it's well made. Oh my God, is it well made? Uh, it is super quiet, right? Super quiet. Um, pedaling is just really nice. The gear system, uh, even though it's on the right side or in the left side in this case, I, I'm, you know, I'm digging it on that side. Um, on this side is actually my, my throttle. Having them both separated is, is, I'm okay with it. I've ridden other bikes that are like this too, and I've gotten used to it. Uh, the display, as you can see right there, is ginormous, very visible, even in this kind of um, daylight. And, you know, I can see this as, you know, a daily commuter for school, for, school, for work. You know, depending on your distance, because you can go far with this guy, right? You can go, depending on if you're pedaling or not, uh, you can go anywhere from 30 all the way up to, you know, 70 plus miles. It's uh, pretty spectacular. And then uh, you have puncture-free tires too. So those puncture-free tires are going to get you where you have to go. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.